Ryzen Threadripper is back and overclocking is better than ever. Here are 9 things you need to know before overclocking the Ryzen Threadripper 7000 Storm Peak processors. All Ryzen Threadripper 7000 processors have overclocking support, including the Precision Boost Overdrive 2 Toolkit and OC Mode. In the past, all users implicitly agreed that overclocking the processor would void the warranty. However, that implicit agreement is no more. On the Ryzen Threadripper 7000 processors, you must explicitly agree to void the warranty if you want to enable the overclocking functions. Accepting this message will permanently fuse a register on the CPU that marks the CPU as used for overclocking. The Ryzen Threadripper 7000 series comes to market for two distinct segments, high-end desktop and workstation. On the workstation side, it's the logical successor to the Ryzen Threadripper Pro 5000 series, headlined by the 64-core 5995WX processor. On the high-end desktop side, it's the successor to the Ryzen Threadripper 3000 series, launched in 2019 and headlined by the 64-core 3990X. The Ryzen Threadripper Pro 5000 series was unlocked for overclocking, so enthusiasts could still take the chips for a spin, but you needed a workstation motherboard with the WRX80 chipset to make it work. To the great dislike of the enthusiast community, AMD didn't release the Threadripper 5000 parts for high-end desktop. I took one of those chips for a spin in Scatterbencher number 43 and overclocked what was supposed to be the Ryzen Threadripper 5990X. There are some differences between the high-end desktop and workstation processors, which I'm sure your favorite tech tuber will explain in great detail. For enthusiasts, the main takeaway is that any Threadripper 7000 can run with the high-end desktop TRX50 chipset. At the Ryzen 7000 launch, I observed that AMD had seemingly 3 or 4 bins for its Zen 4 CCDs. The CCDs were allocated accordingly to the Ryzen 9, Ryzen 7 and Ryzen 5 product lines. However, the dual CCD Ryzen 9 processors didn't get two top bin CCDs. Instead, you got a mix of one top bin and one not top bin CCD. It seems this is also the case with the Ryzen Threadripper 7000 processors. However, things are not as straightforward as they may seem. Threadripper 7000 and Threadripper Pro 7000 have similar specifications when it comes to the maximum boost frequency. CPUs with more than 32 cores have a maximum boost frequency of 5.1 GHz, and CPUs with 32 or fewer cores have a maximum boost frequency of 5.3 GHz. When checking the actual CPUs, this specification holds for the Threadripper Pro parts, but not for the Threadripper parts. For example, on the 64-core Threadripper 7980X processor I have on hand, all cores can boost to 5.3 GHz, and the cores in one CCD can even boost beyond 5.6 GHz. What's going on? It looks similar to the dual CCD Ryzen 7000 X3 processors, where different CCDs have a different programmed IFMAX limit. You can still extend the IFMAX limit by up to 200 MHz using the Precision Boost 2 Boost Clock Override or IFMAX Override tool. So the one CCD will be able to boost to 5.85 GHz and the others to 5.55 GHz. We can only speculate why AMD does this. However, from a business perspective, it kind of makes sense. It's pretty straightforward for AMD to charge a premium for top bin CCDs. After all, the target customer highly values those peak boost frequencies. An easy way to increase the perceived value for the mid and bottom bin CCDs is by repurposing them for processor SKUs where peak frequency is not the primary value driver. For example, for many core processor SKUs like the 7980X, the CCD's main value add is increasing the core count. Or for X3D processors, where the lack of performance due to the lower peak frequency is compensated by the additional 3D vCache. The change that will undoubtedly have the most significant impact on overclocking is that the Storm Peak processor cores are powered by not one but two VDDCR CPU voltage rails. The main advantage of adding an extra voltage plane is that it's much less taxing on the VRM. In case you missed my Scatterbencher number 43 overclocking guide with the Ryzen Threadripper 5990X, 
A key limiting issue for reaching the maximum performance on the previous gen was that, under overclocked conditions, the EDC, or electrical design current, would peak over 800 amps, and that would trigger the VRM OCP and shut down the system. With the current draw now split across two power planes, the current draw per power plane halves. As a result, there's no more VRM limitation when overclocking. The C-State boost limiter is one of the many performance limiters that impact the precision boost algorithm. Effectively, C-State boost limits the maximum frequency when a certain number of cores are active. For the 16-core 7950X, the C-State boost limit would force the CPU to run at 5.5 GHz when more than 4 cores were active. On the 64-core Ryzen Threadripper 7980X, the C-State boost limiter restricts the CPU core frequency to 4.8 GHz when more than 8 cores are active. For Ryzen 7000, the Asus ROG team developed a medium load boosted feature to work around this problem. I explain how this feature works in a video titled Why Your Ryzen 7000 Doesn't Boost Past 5.5 GHz Anymore. Unfortunately, on Ryzen Threadripper 7000, the C-State boost limit is enabled once again. To make matters worse, the medium load boosted workaround feature has also been patched by AMD. So for now, we're stuck with this performance limiter regarding multi-threaded performance. You can offset this C-State boost limiter by using the clock boost override. So you can boost to 5 GHz when more than 8 cores are active. With the introduction of the Precision Boost Overdrive 2 Curve Optimizer Tuning Tool, enthusiasts obtain the capability to fine-tune the dynamic boost algorithm on a per-core basis. Ever since, curve optimizing has been the most common approach to overclocking Ryzen processors. Curve optimizing on a per-core basis is undoubtedly a tedious and arduous process. Owners of the 16-core Ryzen 9 7950X can attest to that. Now imagine how much longer it will take with the 96-core Ryzen Threadripper Pro 7995WX processor. After death by PowerPoint, there's now death by curve optimizer. Fortunately, AMD has added a per CCD curve optimizer option to their overclocking menu. That means we now have three ways to tune using curve optimizer. For all cores, for all cores within a CCD and for each core individually. While per CCD curve optimizer tuning offers some flexibility, it's impossible to mix and match with per core tuning. So either you tune per core or per CCD, but not some chiplets per CCD and others per core. A prominent new overclocking feature for Ryzen 7000 processors was asynchronous e-clock. In asynchronous mode, the processor would use two distinct external 100 MHz reference clocks. That means you would be able to increase the reference clock for the CPU cores independent of any of the clocks of the other parts inside your CPU. This gave rise to a new overclocking strategy for Ryzen 7000 CPUs, which I dubbed supercharging PBO. The OC strategy involves offsetting the precision boost voltage frequency curve by increasing the e-clock frequency. I show how this strategy works in the vast majority of my Ryzen 7000 overclocking guides, including the one for the Ryzen 7 7800X3D. While asynchronous e-clock is also available on Ryzen Threadripper 7000 processors, it's not as neatly implemented as on mainstream desktops. Depending on your motherboard of choice, the external reference clock used for the CPU cores also drives the clock for some other parts inside your CPU, such as the memory fabric and PCIe lanes. So unlike on the Ryzen 7000 mainstream desktop, there's no isolated clock for just the CPU cores, and thus this will impact your choice of viable overclocking strategies for the Ryzen Threadripper 7000. I hope to cover this in more detail in future Scatterbencher guides. PCC, which stands for Peak Current Control, is another critical performance limiter to be aware of when overclocking the Ryzen Threadripper 7000. The PCC limiter essentially governs the maximum CPU current draw. Suppose the actual current exceeds the maximum allowed current. In that case, the CPU will clock stretch 
rather than shutting down the system due to overcurrent protection. That will result in a lower effective core clock and thus lower performance. An essential difference between PCC and any of the other performance limiters we are familiar with is that this limiter is also active in OC mode, so it's not a precision boost limiter. You'll find that the PCC limiter function isn't available on ASUS motherboards in the BIOS. Instead, they've tied the PCC configuration to the VRM OCP auto rules. Regarding memory overclocking, the Ryzen Threadripper 7000 also supports AMD Expo technology. AMD introduced Expo with the launch of the Ryzen 7000 and its transition from DDR4 to DDR5 memory. Even though the Ryzen Threadripper 7000 is only compatible with RDIMM memory, it still supports the Expo specification. The AMD Extended Profiles for Overclocking, or AMD Expo, is developed to enable ubiquitous memory overclocking profiles for AMD platforms supporting DDR5 UDIMM or RDIMM memory. Its purpose is to allow memory vendors to program higher than JTAG performance profiles onto the SPD of the memory sticks. The user can then enable these settings with a single option in the BIOS. The result is that customers can unleash their full memory performance with essentially the click of a single button. When writing the script for this video, I was unaware of any publicly announced Expo RDIMM kits, but knowing G-Skill, I would say keep an eye out for the Zeta R5 equivalent Expo kits. Anyway, that's all for today. I wish you all the best of luck with your Ryzen Threadripper 7000 overclocking adventures. I'm also preparing a couple of Scatterventure overclocking guides, so stay tuned for that. I want to thank my Patreon supporters for supporting my work. I will also put up a written version of this video on my blog for those who want a closer look at the results or benchmark instructions. If you have any questions or comments, please drop them in the comment section below and see you next time.